thanking God again this time for what might be a better understanding of divine justice in Ezekiel chapter 5. Therefore, let's call it according to their deeds. A quote that is going to come up, I think, again in chapter 7 and chapter 9, even though it does not literally appear here. This chapter may give us an example of how God deals with Israel and us according to our deeds. Where in the first four verses, Ezekiel is going to be called to give another demonstration, this time by shaving his own head and dividing the hair into thirds. A third he shall burn, a third he shall strike with the sword, and a third he shall scatter to represent the future of the rest of the remnant of Israel, really the people of Judah left back after the first deportation of those who left with King Jehoiachin to Judah, once again, where Ezekiel is prophesying now. Beyond that, though, in verses 5 through roughly 12, it's going to seem to take a pause to describe the decline of Judah, saying, as he will say in other places, that they have become even more wicked than the godless nations around them, with a level of integrity that has sunk beneath the standards of the laws of those around them. Understanding that, he is going to say that he is going to do something that is unique, meaning nothing he has done before and nothing he will do again, essentially turning them over to cannibalism during the ordeal that he is about to bring them through. And not just the kind of cannibalism we might read about in American history, but this is the kind of desperation and shame that God is literally going to tell them he is bringing them into where they are going to eat, as he's alluded to before, their own children. Going on to say it's going to make them the source of shame to the nations around them, quite possibly helping us have a better idea of all the prophecies leading up to this point, warning that they would indeed be the shame of the region or the shame of all who knew of what happened in Judah and Israel. Going on to say that God himself will not spare or have pity in verse 11. The final section of the chapter, verses 13 through the end of the chapter, roughly verse 17, describing the way in which he will spend his anger about the accumulated evils and treachery that had taken root and set up shop in Judah. However, the thing that might have most caught my attention, obviously, was the call to not only cannibalism, but driving them to the point where they would eat their own kids. Something that shocked me and really kind of left me scratching my head until I realized, what's God punishing? He's punishing people who had given themselves over to child sacrifice, reminding me even more that God was also holding them accountable for rampant injustices. And this might not be the point that God was making here, but throughout this period of history and the word in general, God is emphasizing the fact that we don't have the right to treat people according to our preferences as much as we have an obligation, like he is about to show us in chapters 7 and 9, to treat one another according to our deeds. And understanding that child sacrifice, if it was back then, anything like its lingering vestiges today, it's a prosperity ritual in which someone sacrifices something they prefer less to preserve the prosperity or the hope of prospering, something they prefer more, regardless of the relative integrity of the thing sacrificed versus the thing preferred. And from that perspective, this chapter may be helping us to understand that not only in Israel's history, but as we understand God to be a God of a single standard of justice for everyone, Israel simply being an example of his love and his justice for all people. He may be helping us understand how unjustly sacrificing others may seem to put us on the path to accomplishment, prosperity, or success when it's actually putting us on the path to lose everything.